Hello there planner fans, I have a planner review for you today. This planner was sent to me by the lovely folks at the Clever Fox Planner Company. Um, even though this was sent to me for review, all opinions in this video are my own. I'm going to take you guys through the unboxing of what you're going to get with this planner, talk a little bit about the options that they have on their website, walk you through the planner, and then give you my opinions on the planner as a whole, and then maybe give some ideas for what I'm thinking I might use this planner for. So let's jump right into it. This planner is available on their website and on Amazon. Um, if you are looking for lots of different options, I would suggest going to their website, which I will link down in the description box below. There are a few options on Amazon as far as color and size go, and I also think layout, but if you want access to all of their colors, layouts, and different options, I would definitely recommend going to their website. So they actually have a really big range of options on their website both in the size and the style of planner and then they also offer a lot of different um, types of planners like a fitness planner, a goal planner, a budget planner, um, and a couple of really interesting notebooks like a bill organizer and then um, and also a cash envelope system. So I was really surprised. I didn't know that they did all that stuff. I just thought they, I've seen this planner on uh, YouTube and also on Amazon before and I had no idea that they had so many different options. So let's get this opened up and so I can take you guys through the planner. I received uh, an A5 size notebook in black. Um, and it's an undated weekly planner. So the planner does come with a few things. There's this card here that basically says, thank you for your purchase, please leave us a review. And then it also comes with a um, 60 day money back guarantee. So if you need to return this for any reason, there's a no hassle refund and it takes you through the steps of how to return it. Then they also come with a few sets of stickers. These are pretty basic stickers. Um, it looks like, <sighs> These are like a chart sticker, so you could be as creative as you want in using that sticker. Uh, family kind of sticker, celebration, birthday, maybe exercise, stretching, working out, meal planning, payday. These kind of look like stock market stickers to me, the red and the green one. A heart sticker, a reading symbol, and then this looks like somebody in like a yoga pose. But three sets of stickers, which is nice. They also have a whole bunch of sticker options on their website. Bigger sticker packs and like different designs of the stickers, different colors and different symbols. So you can order that on their website. And then this is a card that just basically talks you through how to use this planner. Not only is this a weekly and monthly planner, but it's heavily focused on goal setting and kind of lays out. It's kind of like reminds me of a passion planner, but a little bit less involved. So it talks you through just like how to use this planner, how to set up your goals, things like that, habits, skills. Um, creating a vision board. There's actually room for a vision board inside this planner. So just good information that comes with the planner that just give some basically some starting points and some ideas for how to use it. Then when we get into the planner, actually this box is really, really nice. It's super heavy duty cardboard. Um, actually, it's like chipboard almost. I wish the Erin Condren like planner boxes were made out of this chipboard material. So definitely this is a really nice box. So let's get the planner out. And this is a fairly thick planner. If you guys can see that on the camera, it's a fairly thick planner. And this is a 12 month planner with a whole bunch of note pages in the back, which I think is a really cool feature. So it says on the front that it's a non-dated weekly planner, achieve your goals and increase your productivity, passion and happiness. So like I said, the, the goal behind this planner is not just only a planner, but more of like a productivity goal fulfilling type of planner. And you'll see when I show you guys the layout on the inside, what I'm talking about. The paper in this planner is very, very bright white and it is definitely thick paper. Let's see, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit because my camera is doing that weird autofocus thing. <laughs> All right, work with me here. I don't know why it does that. I feel like it does this weird autofocus, the zoom in, zoom out thing when the pages are all white. So I'm gonna turn the page. <laughs> But uh, the paper in here is very, very thick paper. I feel like it would take fountain pens. Hello. Okay, there we go. I feel like this paper would take fountain pen, no problem. It's very, very smooth paper, which is what I prefer. If you watched my Erin Condren unboxing video, which um, I will put a card up here at the top, link you to that video. But 
I, they have really, really thick, nice paper, but I'm not a fan of how toothy that paper is. This paper is nice and smooth, and that's kind of, that's the paper that I like to write on. So the text is showing up crisp, crisply on the pages. Um, and then this is kind of like a standard opening page for most planners. It tells you, let's see, designed in Europe, crafted in China, 100% recycled paper. Uh, and then this is the, if found, please return to page. And then we get into the actual goal setting part of this planner. So we have gratitude, self-awareness, daily rituals, I am grateful for, what am I passionate about, skills to learn, my affirmations. So this, as we go through this planner, you'll see more and more of this really guided goal setting pages. I tend to kind of get locked up when things are super, super spelled out for me. It causes me to have a lot of like analysis paralysis at the very beginning, but once I kind of like unclench and let go of that, I find these guided pages to be really, really helpful. So I don't know if any of you guys are like that, but sometimes when I see things that are so specific and so kind of dialed in on what they're asking me, I kind of panic and I'm like, well, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer that. So um, I think that this does a good job of starting out with I'm grateful for, what am I passionate about, this is what I want to learn, and here are my affirmations. And it starts out kind of the funnel effect, and it's it's really easy, like, I'm grateful for yada yada yada. So you can start with that and get a little bit more specific as you're moving across the page, which I, th I think for somebody like me is a really nice introduction to setting up goals. Then the next page we have our vision board set up and if you look on their website or on the card that came with the planner it gives you some examples of a vision board what you are um, kind of envisioning for yourself by using this planner or what like the vision of what your goal is that you're using this planner to achieve then the next couple of pages are goal setting pages and it gives you specific areas to put these goals in. And again, this would be super easy to just white out and write your own areas in if this is too specific or if this doesn't pertain to you, but we have health, business and career, family, friends, significant other and romance, finance, personal development, fun and recreation and spiritual. So if these goals are, if this life area is not something that you need to focus on or not something that pertains to you, it would be super easy to just wipe that out and then write in whatever you would want to do. Um, the idea, which I'll get to at the end for what I'm using this planner for, I may end up whiting out some of those categories and writing in my own goals. The next page is just more goal setting pages it looks like. So my focus goal one, go two, goal the goal one, goal two, goal three, goal four, and goal five. So I'm not sure how I wonder if this is so this looks like maybe it's just like personal focus goals, like things that you want to like top five things that you want to work in for the year. Um, I'm not sure how this is different. I guess these goals are focused more specific on like different areas of your life, and then this page can be your personal top five goals that you want to focus on this year. And then there's more space over here on the right for my mind map. Mind mapping is a technique that um, in the passion planner, I know they have, they talk about that a little bit in, in their goal setting areas, but basically it's kind of like a free space for you to write out, list out, draw out, whatever you need to use this space for. This is a lot more open, which like I said before, things that are too specific can kind of cause me to freeze up and not know how to proceed. This open-ended blank page can do the exact same thing. So that's why when I get like a new bullet journal or a new notebook, it takes me weeks to even break into it because if it's too specific, I panic. If it's too open, I panic. So I just, <laughs> I have to, um, I have to like ease myself into using these products. All right, so then we get straight into our monthly layout. This is an undated planner, so you would fill in this. I don't personally like using undated planners because it's it seems like a lot of work for me to fill in those dates. However, undated planners are really great for if you are using them for a specific project because there's no wasted pages if it's not um, if it's not already dated, you can jump in whenever you want and you can um, skip a whole month if you want. Let's say you're working on your goals or a project for the month of March, but nothing happened in April, you can just flip the page and go straight into May or June and not waste anything. So there's definitely some benefits to it. It's a little bit more work to get it set up at the beginning, but for a planner like this with the focus of goal setting and a project, I think that's a good idea and the way to go. 
So at the top you would be, you have space to write in the month and the year, um, and then you it's a Sunday to Saturday monthly calendar, and then let's let me look a Monday through Sunday weekly layout. So for some people, that's how Erin Condren does it. She has a Sunday to Saturday monthly view, a Monday to Sunday view. For some people, that just kind of throws them all off, but something to keep in mind, I have somehow, my brain is used to seeing calendars like that, so it doesn't throw me off anymore. I've used the Erin Condren long enough to be able to see it in that view and not be all confused. I've also used the Hobonichi long enough to be able to do Monday through Sunday without a problem. So just something to keep in mind if you're not somebody likes to go between those two types of layouts. Then on the left hand side here we have a uh, space for habits you want to adopt, skills you want to learn, things to avoid, places to go, people to see, space at the bottom for this month's goals, space at the bottom for this month's wins, so an affirmation area, and then how I will improve next month. I think this is a this is a good way to take a snapshot of what happened in your month, what you were able to accomplish, what you still need to work on, and what you are planning on doing for the next month. So we have 12 layouts like this, 12 months worth of layouts like this, all grouped together at the front. So you have all your months at the front, and then we get into our weekly pages that look like this. Now, this is not a lot of space. This is an A5 size planner. And so it's about the size of half of a sheet of printer paper. The space for each day is, there's only one, two, three, four spaces for each day that go across the page and then Saturday and Sunday have one, two, three, four, five spaces but they're about half the size of the days above them. So I know I've said this a dozen times already, I don't necessarily know if I would use this as like my, my all like catch-all planner like for my everyday life because my normal daily to-do list is is massive and so that's why I prefer like a vertical layout but if you are using this for a specific purpose or a specific goal or a specific project where you may or may not need a whole lot of space per day, maybe you're only tackling a couple of things each day, this would be the perfect size because you have your weekly layout right here and then you have tracking ability here on the right hand side. When you're in an A5 size planner, the size is just limited. That's just kind of just the way it is. So because they want to include um, keeping you focused on your goals and priorities, they use one side of the page for the daily setup and the other side of the page to make sure that you are staying on top of your tasks. So on this side of the page we have a space for this week's main goal and then I think this is really interesting but right below here it says reward if achieved and as a former animal trainer and somebody that understands the power of positive reinforcement setting rewards for yourself when you achieve those goals is a really really important thing to do because you need something to kind of work towards and you need something to positively reinforce yourself when you achieve what you need to achieve. The next box over here is this week's priorities. This is a notes box. This is a personal to-do list. So if you were using this for work on the left-hand side, this is also a space for a personal to-do list. This week's wins, how I'll improve next week, which is the same layout that we see in the monthly view, and then a habit or skills tracker right here. Like I said, this amount of space would be fine for something that doesn't is not necessarily like a catch-all planner, but this is a very limiting size unless you are going to be using it for one specific project. So then we have 52 weeks worth of these weekly pages. So we have our monthly pages, then we have our weekly pages, and then we flip to one of my favorite things in this planner, all of the note pages that are in the back. So this planner uses dot grid note pages, which are by far my favorite type of note pages because like I said in my Erin Condren video, dot grid to me is like the universal note page because people who want to use it as lined can use it as lined, people who want to use it as graph paper can use it as graph paper, and then people that just want to use it as blank paper, like you can't even hardly see the dots on the screen right now. This is this can, is coming across as blank paper, but it's a very light gray dot grid paper. So for somebody that might be using this for a multitude of different things. You might need to use lists on one page, you might need to draw something out, you might need to graph something. Um, the dot grid paper to me is just the best kind of paper that there is. There was somebody in my last video that commented that when I was talking about how I wish Erin Condren used dot grid paper, she said she hates dot grid paper and I was just like 
what? I love dot grid paper, and I think dot grid paper works for so many different people, but I just didn't even think about that. I didn't even know there were dot grid paper haters out there. But um, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, when you have something that you're not sure exactly how it's going to be used, dot grid paper really fits the bill because you can use it for line paper, grid paper, blank paper, whatever. Um, it doesn't look like any of the pages are removable. Occasionally, I know like in the look term, the last like, 10 pages or so have perforations so you can tear them out. If you're careful, you can tear pages out of a bound book and not cause problems, but I wouldn't say that these pages are removable. But we do have 55 pages, so 27 sheets or so of dot grid paper in the back. So that is quite a chunk. That's, as from all the planners I've ever reviewed, this is by far the most number of extra note pages in the back. So that's that's definitely a plus for this planner, especially if you're going to be using it for projects and, or work. And then we have a, like just a standard pocket in the back, just like the Leuchtturm or most other hardbound notebooks have. I think the Moleskine has it as well, but a pocket in the back. Um, oh, one thing I did forget to mention, there are three bookmarks in this planner which I thought it was really interesting that this is like a really neutral looking planner and then you have these super colorful bookmarks but um, there's three bookmarks which I love when there's book when there's bookmarks and when there's a lot of bookmarks you could use one for monthly one for weekly and one for your notes section um, so that's just a nice touch they also have an elasticized uh, band on the side for you to be able to add a pen let me stick a pen in here this is always like a good plant pen to test because it has the rubberized grip and those are always such a pain to get into the pen holders. But yeah, that fits in there perfectly, comes in and out, and it's actually, it's snug, but not so snug that I can't get it in and out easily, but not so loose that I'm afraid I'm gonna lose this pen. That's actually great. Um, and then it does have an elastic that closes, oh, got hung up on my pen. It does have an elastic that closes the entire planner. So, what is this planner going to run you? On their website, this is like their original undated weekly planner. This is going to run you $24.99. And I'm jumping in here while I'm editing to mention that they do offer free shipping on all domestic United States orders. Some of their planners were available on Amazon with Prime. The premium planners which uh, they actually had, um, I'll insert a, a photo of the premium planners here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The premium planners are $10 more and it looks like they have a different layout on the inside. It's a little bit cleaner looking, a little bit less basic looking, but that's another $10. Then they also have a pro size planner, which is a larger size. That's gonna cost you $34.99. Um, one of the other really cool planners I saw on their website that I'm going to mention is the Bill Organizer and then their Cash Envelope system as well. They also have a specific goal setting planner which I think runs about 13 weeks. They have a budget planner and they have fitness planners as well as a few options for stickers. So what do I think I'm going to use this planner for? Um, this is too small in my opinion to use as a normal planner. They do have a daily option, but I'm just not really a daily planner. I like to see my entire week all at once and I need a lot of space for my week. So this is a little bit too small for me to use as my daily planner because four lines, even if I split that in half and did four and four and had eight lines half size, I, it's still gonna be too small for me. However, my sister and I run a Lyme disease uh, support group on Facebook and we have almost 2,000 members in there and it's a lot of work to keep track of our Instagram page and the blog that we run. We write articles and share information with our members and it's a ton of work keeping track of all of the things that I need to do to keep that group alive. So I have been looking for a a planner or a notebook that I can use to plan out my content. I need something that I can plan my blog posts in. I need something that I can plan my group posts in. I need something that I can plan my Instagram posts in. And those things only would take up like a couple of lines per day. So occasionally I'll throw that in my, my main planner, but it would be really nice to have a dedicated like Lyme disease group planner that I can keep track of the group, the Instagram, and the blog website all in one. And like I said, 
this is undated and so if there is a month where I'm just swamped with other stuff and I can't get to what I need to get for, to for the group, I can use this planner. Um, I also have big dreams of growing that group and getting our information to be more accessible to people and just kind of bringing people into the awareness of Lyme disease and the people that it affects. And so I think this would be a really great planner to use to plan for those goals and to help me realize those goals in a manageable way. So I have these aspirations for what I wanna do with the group, not sure how I want to execute it yet. I think something like this that can help me break down those big dreams and put it into smaller, more manageable pieces would be perfect. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm gonna leave links to everything that I talked about in this video in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope this was helpful. And my question for you guys is, are you using a goal planner? Do you write your goals in your main planner or do you use something separate to help you kind of fleece out those big ideas and break them down into smaller, more manageable pieces? I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.